What's up? Meditate here. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the main fascia covering the structures in the lower extremity. So the lower limb is covered in muscles, right? These muscles are covered by fascia separating these muscles into compartments, as well as forming a smooth environment around the muscles for less friction during contraction. So in this video, we're first going to cover the fascia in the pelvic region, then we will do the fascia of the thigh, then the fascia of the leg, and after that, we will do the fascia of the foot. So our goal for this video is to understand how the fascia is distributed in the lower limb, and we will start with the fascia of the pelvic region. The first fascia we're going to talk about is called the iliac fascia, which covers the iliac muscle. And on the distal part, where the iliac muscle and the iliopsoas meet, it will surround the union of these muscles. So it's going to surround the iliopsoas muscle. Then you see the internal obturator muscle here. There's going to be a fascia that covers this muscle, called the obturator fascia. So it covers the internal obturator muscle, like this. Now let's take a look at the butt. There's going to be a fascia that covers the gluteus maximus and the gluteus medius, just like this. This fascia surrounds these two muscles and this is called the gluteal fascia. So that was the main fascia that I wanted to cover in the pelvic region. Now let's do the fascia of the thigh, which is this one, called fascia lata. Fascia lata is going to attach proximally to the iliac crest and the inguinal ligament and it's going to continue dorsally as the gluteal fascia. Then it's going to attach distally at the epicondyles of the femur, base of the patella, and the head of the fibula. Laterally, fascia lata form a thick band of connective tissue called the iliotibial tract. Now, let's go ahead and make a transverse cut, remove the upper part, and look at the fascia from this perspective. We will see the femur here in the middle, and the fascia lata around it with the iliotibial tract on the lateral side. So this is the anterior view, this is the posterior view, and this is the medial, and this is the lateral view. Okay, now there's going to be septa separating the muscles of the thigh into compartments. We have the lateral intermuscular septum, the medial intermuscular septum, and the anterior intermuscular septum. Between the lateral and the medial intermuscular septae, we will find muscles like the biceps femoris, short head and long head, semi tendinosus, and semi membranosus. Medially, we can find the adductor magnus, adductor brevis, and adductor longus, as well as the gracilis and the sartorius. Here also passes the femoral artery and the femoral nerve in the adductor canal. In the anterior compartment, we can find muscles like the vastus medialis, vastus intermedius, rectus femoris, and the vastus lateralis. Sweet! Now we have an overview of the fascia of the thigh. Now, the fascia lata is going to form a fibrous sheath around the iliotibial tract, around the gracilis, around the sartorius, and around the femoral artery and vein. So that is how the fascia lata functions. But notice that there's a hole on it, right here. This opening is called the saphenus opening, or hiatus saphenus. There are a couple of structures that passes through this opening, like the saphenus vein for example. And this opening is covered by a fascia called the cribriform fascia. So that is everything for the fascia lata. Now let's go ahead and do the fascia of the leg, which consists of the cruel fascia, as you see here. So if we make a cross section like this, and look at the leg from this perspective, we'll be able to see the tibia and the fibula, and around them is the crural fascia. Now between the tibia and the fibula, there's the interosseous membrane, and then there's the anterior intermuscular septum, and a posterior intermuscular septum, as well as the deep lamina separating the posterior compartment into two layers. Deep in the posterior compartment, we can find the muscles like the tibialis posterior, flexor hallucis longus, and flexor digitorum longus. Superficially, we can find the soleus, gastrocnemius lateralis, and gastrocnemius medialis. In the anterior compartment, we can find muscles like the tibialis anterior, extensor hallucis longus, and extensor digitorum longus. In the lateral compartment, we can find the fibularis brevis and fibularis longus. So that was the fascia of the leg. Now, if we look at the leg posteriorly, we can find the crural fascia around the leg and the fascia lata around the thigh, and between them, behind the knee, we will find a depression called the popliteal fossa, which is covered by the popliteal fascia. Now, let's understand the fascia of the foot, and to do that, we will start by looking at the dorsum of the foot and the medial view of the foot. The fascia of the leg continues down and form a thickened fascia, band of fibers, that protects and organizes the tendons going down to the foot. These bands are called the retinoculum, 
We first have the superior extensor retinoculum and an inferior extensor retinoculum. The inferior extensor retinoculum is going to form four canals underneath it for the tendons of the extensor muscles. The first canal it forms is for the tendons of the tibialis anterior, forming a synovial sheath around it. The second canal is for the tendons of the extensor hallucis longus. The third canal is for the dorsalis pedis artery and vein, and also the feebler nerve. And this is actually an important landmark for when you want to palpate the dorsalis pedis pulse. One way to find this pulse is to extend the toe, as you see here, so that the tendons for the extensor hallucis longus pops up. Then you can just palpate laterally to the tendon, and then you will feel the dorsalis pedis artery pulsating. Then the fourth canal is for the tendons of the extensor digitorum longus. Alright, so that's these. Now on the medial side, we can find the flexor retinoculum. And underneath the flexor retinoculum, we can also find some canals for the tendons and vasculature. The first canal is for the tendons of the tibialis posterior. The second canal is for the tendons of the flexor digitorum longus. The third canal is for the tibialis posterior artery in vein, as well as the tibialis nerve. And this is also clinically important because right behind the medial malleolus, we can palpate the pulse of the posterior tibial artery. Then behind them, there's the fourth canal, which contains the tendons of the flexor hallucis longus. So that's these two. Now, if we look at the lateral view of the foot, we can find two other retinoculum. These are the superior and the inferior fibular retinoculum, and they contain tendons for the fibularis longus and brevis. Now, if we look at the plantar surface of the foot, we can find the plantar aponeurosis, which fuses with the superficial plantar fascia. The plantar aponeurosis helps to maintain the longitudinal arch of the foot, and it also fuses with the surface of the flexor digitorum brevis and covers it. Now, lastly, let's cross the foot like this, cut it, and then look at it from this view. First, we can find the metatarsal bones from the first to the fifth. We can also draw an outline for the foot by adding the skin. On the dorsum of the foot, we can find the superficial dorsal fascia of the foot. The dorsum contains very little fat, but here we can find tendons of the long muscles of the foot like the extensor digitorum longus and the extensor hallucis longus, as well as blood vessels and nerves. Then, between the metatarsals, we can find the fascia called the interosseous dorsal fascia of the foot, which covers the interosseous muscles from a dorsal view. Then, there's the interosseous plantar fascia, which cover the interosseous muscles from the ventral aspect. Then, we have the superficial plantar fascia, which covers the lateral and the medial group of the foot muscles. And don't forget that the superficial fascia also fuses with the plantar aponeurosis. So that was everything I had for the fascia of the lower limb, and I hope that was helpful.